Hey everybody, it's Mitch, and welcome to my next video. Today, we are going to be doing another Dungeons & Dragons video, and today we're going to be doing a Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 Druids Spell Advice for levels 0 through 3rd uh, in terms of spell level. So we're going to be talking about all the 0 through 3rd level spells in uh, in D&D 3.5 for Druids. And we're just going to go in detail into all the best spells so that you can have a pretty decent idea of what you want to um, want to prepare. So first off, um, let's talk about, uh, well, first off, let's talk about one thing. Well, some of the better spells are Summon Nature's Ally. I'm not going to be talking about those too much beyond right now because you don't need to prepare those. You can swap other spells for Summon Nature's Ally. They're great spells. You can summon all sorts of useful things. Um, the uh, Earth Elementals, Fire Elementals, uh, some of the better ones, Water Elementals occasionally, Air Elementals are great. All the Elementals, really, they all serve different uses, and they're all very useful um, at different things. Earth Elementals, more often than not, will be your fighters. Uh, air Elementals, you can, you know, they fly, so they'll be your aerial fighters. If you happen to have any sort of water combat or you have fire you need to put out, water elementals are your friend. Fire elementals are pretty good in combat too, I think. Um, so you have a number of different options. They're all good. Those aren't the only things you can summon with Summon Nature's Ally, of course. You can also summon like animals and stuff, uh, like dire animals and all that, which are also useful. So very, very practical. You can get a lot done with those spells but you're not going to be preparing them. So no need to worry about those. And there's one at every level other than zero. So yeah. So let's start with the zero level spells. Now, with zero level spells, you have um, not too many great options. There's a few pretty good ones, like Detect Magic. Very useful. Uh, it can help you figure out uh, when magical traps are around, when there's like a suspicious room. Really great for trying to get an idea of what's going on in the room. Um, you can also, uh, it, it's, it's a, you can use it to try and figure out if there's, it really helps you get a better lay of what's going on. Like, without knowing if something has a magical aura to it can be really helpful at figuring out um, your next course of action. So great uh, spell. Um, of course, Create Waters also quite useful in a lot of situations. Um, I mean, it, it, it can be very useful in a, a number of situations. Like if somebody hits you with blinding split, uh, spittle, which we'll be talking about here later, um, that spell, uh, Create Water, will be really great for that because you can just cast that on yourself and problem solved. You just, rent, you just undid that spell. Now, it took an action to do, but... You know, it's a, it's useful for that. It's useful for a number of other things. Um, it can also be just useful for having some fun. Um, and there's not a whole lot of uses for zero level spells anyway. So, you know, just casting create water just to, you know, soak your friend just because, you know, you have a free minute. It's fun. So, and, you know, zero level spells are the better ones to waste on that if you're going to do it. Um, of course, Cure Minor Wounds is all right. Uh, not the best of spells, but it can be handy for some last second stabilization in a pinch. So it's not one you're going to be using a lot, but keeping like one of those prepared a day, not a bad idea. You know, just in case you really need to stabilize someone and you don't want to waste a uh, stronger spell, it's not bad. I wouldn't prepare more than one. I'd say one's kind of the limit on that one. Um, although there's not too many options, good options at zero. Uh, anyways, let's move on to our first level spells. So at first level, you're going to see uh, some better stuff. Um, some of them are hit or miss, though, in my opinion. Like things like Entangle. So that one's going to require some plant growth in the area. If you're not in an area that already has plants, that spell won't work. All that spell does is it makes the plants that are nearby grow longer and grab onto everything. Now, 
That spell also doesn't really distinguish between friend and foe. So you really have to be careful about how you use that one because I've seen it backfire pretty hard. Like I, I have definitely, I, I've seen it be very useful and I've also seen it do more harm than good when cast. So it's a pretty good spell, but you really got to be careful about when you're using it because you can't use it all the time. And a lot of the times you think it might be a good idea and it turns out not so much. So that's a little bit of an issue on that one. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, so there, 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 there's a number of them. Cure Light Wounds is, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's not the best of spells in the world, but, you know, it, it's, it's all right. Like, could be better. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, then if you get into, like, second level spells, you can see some pretty decent second level spells out there. Like, that's when you start getting into the Heart of Spells. So Heart of Air, pretty nice spell to have around. Um, it's going to help get you uh, a number of uh, number of little buffs. And it has really good synergy with uh, other spells that are even better, that like Heart of Water, um, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, also, you have things like Kelp Strand, which are amazing. Kelp Strand is one of the better spells out there. Holy crap, is that a good spell. You can use Kelp Strand to, you know, gain, uh, well, basically it lets you summon like a bunch of strands of kelp that will grapple enemies. Now, these are super, super, super nice. What's really good about Kelp Strand is that um, it, it just works so well. It's so, the grapple checks are just going to be crazy high because of what you can replace things with. So all but the best grapplers are going to really struggle to get out of these. Now, if they happen to have a freedom of movement effect, that kind of undoes uh, Kelp Strand. So, you know, there's that, but that's a fairly powerful effect. So, you know, it is what it is on that. On top of that, you also, um, you know, the, your super strong grappler guys can break out no problem. They're not going to work too well on them. Although, even those guys will get slowed down a little bit generally if you throw all the strands on them. Uh, they can really slow down a lot of other characters, um, make a lot of characters super useless. Kelp Strand is so, 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 so powerful. Um, however, there are some fairly easy ways out if the person you're hitting happens to have them, like teleportation of any kind will get you out of them. Um, any sort of uh, like plane shift kind of thing will work. That one's a little overkill for it, but it will work. Um, of course, anything like Dimension Door or anything that will like take you to the astral plane uh, or the ethereal plane. So anything uh, astral plane, of course, that's teleportation, but ethereal plane will absolutely get you out of uh, kelp strands. I mean, they're just can't, uh, strands of kelp. You'll, you'll slip right through them if you go ethereal. Um, but really, really strong. If someone isn't prepared for them, you really, uh, they're, they're pretty nasty. Um, there isn't any method uh, that's mentioned for like break for like cutting them and like destroying them. A DM might allow for something like that because it kind of just makes sense, but they're also magic, so maybe not. Um, but yeah, uh, Kelp Strand's super, super great. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, there, there's some really good, uh, really good second level spells, like really, really good second level. Um, yeah, uh, Blinding Spittle, as I was talking about, oh my god, that one is so good, it can blind, it does a little bit of damage, but it blinds characters for quite some time, so that can be really useful, taking away someone's ability to see, uh, more often than not, characters aren't going to be able to deal with being blinded very well, uh, it can be easily fixed by just washing your face in water, but that can be hard to find, especially in the middle of combat, um, while blind, that, that, so that that can be really nasty. Of course, create water. Just casting that on yourself will fix it. But beyond that, it's pretty hard to do. Um, uh, mass snake swiftness. Oh my God, mass snake swiftness is so so good. 
especially when you have a bunch of allies uh, that are have surrounded the enemy. Yes, Mass Snake Swiftness is one of the best spells out there. You can, uh, like, they all just get a free attack. And especially if you have some really hard-hitting allies, that is excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, yeah. Oof. Uh, there's, there, there's some good stuff with that. Now, third level is when you start getting some really good stuff. Like, of course, Heart of Water, which... Um, actually gives, uh, in addition to letting you breathe underwater, it will also, you know, let you, um, you know, uh, it'll let you do some pretty cool stuff like, oh, I don't know, um, uh, give you a freedom of movement effect, it gives you a swim speed. It's just nice. It's a good spell. And, you know, of course, it has synergy with Heart of Air. So, Excellent spell right there. Um, yeah, third, third, third level's got some some really, really, really good stuff. Um, that's all. This is also the level where you end up with uh, Greater Magic Fang, which is super nice because it'll give uh, whoever you hit that with a plus five to all their natural attacks. So it's, it's a really, really good spell for um, people who have lots of natural attacks. Like... Oh, I don't know. It could be correct, useful on, say, a monk who's using unarmed strikes, or if you happen to have a bite attack, or something like that. You could give it to your animal companion if they happen to have that. Very, very nice uh, effects with uh, Greater Magic Weapon. Uh, not Greater Magic Weapon. Greater Magic Fang, which is similar to Greater Magic Weapon. Uh, Sleet Storm. It's, it's, that's an all right one. Um, I talked about that in my previous video. I, I couldn't remember the name in that one. Um, but the problem with Sleep Storm is I've seen it used to great effect, and it can be very, very useful, being able to blind everybody in an area. The problem is if you hit the wrong area, you could end up having it backfire and cause more harm than good because you're also blind when you walk into that area. So it's another one like in Tango where you really got to be careful where you're throwing that because it can, it can backfire on you. It, it really, really can. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, th th there's, there's a lot of really, really good spells. Um, of course, like I mentioned at the start of the video, all the summon spells, there's a various uh, spells in this area, uh, first through third, where you can get uh, specific summons that will last longer. So that's always good. Um, yeah, just a lot of really, really great spells all around. Um, yeah, uh, some of them get better at, uh, some of them are uh, more suited for higher level than lower level, sure. Um, but uh, most of them, a lot of them can be great at low level too. Uh, most of these spells that I've listed, they actually will scale as you get stronger. So they actually still stay relevant even when you hit high levels. So, yeah, great spells all around. The Druid spell list, super, super great. And, yeah, that's all I have on uh, Druid spells advice for zero through third level spells. As always, if you have anything you want to add, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. If you're new to the channel uh, and you haven't already done so, subscribe. I've got more videos just like this. And, as always, I'm Mitch. I'll be seeing you.